here, it's Jenny from Southern Savers. We are gonna do something different today. So it's not all about the deals and what we grab, but it's about saving time and money in the kitchen. So our family is getting ready for two big events. We have surgery coming up on one of our daughters and a baby coming up a few weeks after that. We're gonna do some freezer cooking so that we have a stocked freezer uh, and I have more time on my hands when all of that's happening. So gonna cover six or seven different meals today. We'll see how far we get. The goal is to put up enough for three weeks for our family just off of these basic ingredients. Um, as you start freezer cooking, if this is new to you, please don't feel like you need to run out to the store and buy it all in one fell swoop because we can follow sales here too. And this week's a great week. We've got Swanson Broth, buy one, get one at a lot of stores, Publix and Bilo, both in my city. Ziploc containers and our foil pans, all buy one, get one for Easter and holiday savings. So we can grab as it comes on sale and tuck it away and be ready for your next freezer cooking day. We're gonna cover some tips as we go through, kind of cooking morning, and hopefully save you some time as you do this as well. First off, I'm gonna give you my biggest tip, and that is that you do not have to do this all in one fell swoop. You can do this across a couple of days. So what you're looking at in front of me is all the dry and packaged ingredients, but I've actually already cooked up all of the meat. I have browned all the ground beef and cooked all of the chicken and shredded it. So as we go in today, we've got a lot of work out of the way. And one other tip, we went with frozen vegetables for a lot of the things that were already diced and already prepped. So most of our prep work is done. Today, we just have to assemble and hopefully we can conquer these 21 meals in less than two hours. That's our goal. Three of the meals that we're making today are really crock pot meals that we're not actually cooking today. We're just compiling all the ingredients. So one of them that I'm working on right now is corn and potato chowder. Really, I'm just getting all the ingredients into these tubs so they're ready to go. And then when it comes time to cook, we're gonna add in broth and some heavy whipping cream into the crock pot. But this way, for a meal for the family, I just need to pull out some quick ingredients. I'm even gonna stick a sticker right on the top of these containers that tell me, you know, from the pantry, get this, this, and this, add them to the crock pot, and some ingredient instructions. Um, but it's not gonna take long at all to have dinner in the crock pot and ready to go for dinner that night for our family. Um, the three meals we're doing this way, corn and potato chowder, chili, and beef stroganoff uh, are all gonna be crock pot meals for us, put away, done, with just the prep time handled beforehand. A fun and quick way to save you some time with your meat, especially if your recipe calls for shredded chicken. I cooked all of my chicken in a crock pot. I just cut it up, I put it in pieces, threw it in the crock pot, left it there for five hours, put a little chicken broth over it. That was it, didn't do anything else. Pulled it straight from the crock pot and put it into my KitchenAid mixer. Leave it in the mixer on medium speed for about five seconds and you have shredded chicken. You didn't have to do any work, no sitting there with a fork pulling things apart. And I was able to do about eight pounds of chicken in probably five minutes, uh, which is a crazy quick tip. Uh, and if anything, you're actually gonna find it slightly fun. One of the big things with freezer cooking is to not get overwhelmed. You're trying to make a month's worth of food in really one sitting. So that is overwhelming, just the thought of it but break things up and add in a friend. You'll notice I have not been doing this alone. Go ahead and have someone that's prepping, that's doing the cutting, that's doing the potato peeling, and while someone else is working on another meal. So we've actually been doing two meals simultaneously uh, with me mostly sticking in crock pot land um, and Jessa doing a lot of the ones that are requiring the, the stuffing and the filling. Uh, another big tip is go ahead and make sure you label really well. Um, so we've got things covered, we have them ready to go in the freezer, but we're putting what they are 
the date they went in, and then any instructions that they need also on the container. When you're thinking about what recipes to plan for, try to pick things that have common ingredients. So of the seven things that we're cooking, they all require shredded chicken and ground beef. So I'm not off having to deal with tons of different meats. They also all require you know, diced onions and diced green peppers. You can do so much of this in bulk ahead of time or even the morning of, but at least we're not dealing with one thing and then another thing, so many things are overlapping that it saves you time in the long run. It also saves you cleanup time. I can use the same chopping board to cut green peppers over and over and over again um, versus doing that every night for dinner. That's the joy of freezer cooking in the end is getting all the prep work out of the way now to where when it comes time to cook dinner for the next month, I don't have a dirty kitchen. I just have dinner on the table. So that's our goal is to speed up in time by picking recipes that go together. So all of the things that we're making today, you can actually click this link and you'll be able to download your shopping list and the recipes themselves, along with printable stickers that can go straight on the items that you're gonna freeze so that you'll know exactly what you need to do when they come out of the freezer. We'll try to make this as easy for you as possible. All six of these being very simple recipes that most families are gonna love, but that also go really well together in terms of prep and kitchen time. I would recommend that you have one, I guess, backup plan um, in case you have extra. So we cooked all of our meat ahead of time and we have extra ground beef. I had already gotten extra spaghetti sauce and tomatoes. So I'm going ahead and making bags of spaghetti sauce that are already put together as well. We'll still have to cook the noodles the night of, but we've got three, maybe four different meals of spaghetti sauce ready and in the freezer as well. That means we ended up making eight meals uh, multiplied numerous times today. And it's kind of a fun surprise, but a great way to not feel like you wasted some meat that you already cooked. So almost exactly four hours later, we're done. 26 meals later, that's really the fun part. Yes, this took four hours. I, how much time would you spend though to make each one of these every single night for the next 26 nights? A lot longer than four hours. So this is a fun time to just kind of see it all together and then think about crashing. It's a lot of work. Uh, I don't have a clean kitchen. I still have dishes to do as well. Um, a few last tips. You'll notice that things are stored in all kinds of different containers, but I chose disposable containers for everything. If you have lots of casserole and nine by 13 pans that you want to put things up in, that's fine. But I was going for less trash or less to clean, more trash probably, uh, make this a little bit easier on us again when it comes time to cooking time. We still need to label some things here before they're ready to hit the freezer, uh, but we've definitely got most of the work done. Most of these meals should be good in the freezer for three to six months, depending on how you've packaged them. So make sure that you wrap them really good. Your weakest links are your freezer bags. So use good freezer bags. If you don't trust them, uh, and I can't say I'm 100% in love with these, I double bagged everything just to be extra careful and make them last hopefully a little bit longer. Before everything can go in the freezer, you can't put hot food straight in the freezer. So some items may need to go into the fridge for a little bit, cool them down, 
and then let's put them in the freezer. We don't really want them sitting on the counter for super long periods of time, um, but we don't want hot food in the freezer that just brings down your freezer temperature, brings it up too much uh, and can affect all the other food in your freezer. After all of this, I hope this encourages you to see how much you could really do in your kitchen to save you time in the long run. Remember, you can head to Southern Savers, you can print these recipes out, you can print your shopping list that already has them multiplied. So we did eight meals, each of them three times, plus a couple extra chicken pot pies because the recipe made more than we planned for. Um, so that shopping list is gonna be everything in bulk. And you may look at that and think, whoa, 11 containers of chicken broth. It's for a lot of meals, so don't panic, but it's nice to be able to do all that shopping and get it done with. So head over, print those out, and start having some fun in the kitchen and saving yourself some time.